Hello again, everyone. Welcome back. In this technical analysis of the stock market video, I call it all quiet on the Western Front because that's exactly where we sit right now. Of course, except, of course, for those that are yelling AI, AI, uh, like, uh, <laughs> like there's no tomorrow. All right, let's, uh, we're going to talk about the S&P 500 this week, and then I'm going to focus on three of the stocks. I talked about Microsoft and Apple and Microsoft last week, which are the two biggest contributors to the S&P 500 gain this, this year. The next three biggest con contributors are NVIDIA, Alphabet, and Meta. Meta. And while I'm thinking about it, let me see if I can... Um, I want, there's a couple of things I wanted to mention about that. And where is that... Hold on a second. Here we go. This is what I wanted to show you. Apple, Microsoft, NVIDIA, Alphabet, Meta, accounting for 80% of the S&P 500 gains this year. So four and a half months. That's pretty significant. We'll see how much longer this is, can continue. Okay, so the VIX closed at 1681 on Friday, up 76 cents. Coming off that low close on Thursday of 1605, which was the second lowest close of the year and the second lowest close in like a year and a half almost. I can't remember exactly what, but a long time. So again, all calm, all quiet, no, uh, no fear going on right now. When you look at the McClellan Oscillator, it's sitting at a minus 15 Below minus 150, extremely oversold. Above plus 150, extremely overbought. We're sitting at minus 115, minus 15, dead neutral, okay? And when you take a look at the short-term trading index, the trend, we're sitting at a neutral 1.02, and the 10-day is sitting at 1.04. We're basically neutral. Anytime I'm in this zone in here, uh, between like 0.85 and 0.1.5, it's kind of a neutral zone. Of course, this is the higher end. Once you start getting above up in here, you definitely have indications of bearish activity going on, and down in here is extreme bullish type of activity, and you use that as a contrary sentiment type of, of indicator. Okay, let's take a look at the... Uh, what happened this last week with the side-by-side -side of the industrials, the S&P and the NASDAQ 100. The Dow was up 126 points. A little bit of a, a slight move to the upside in here. It, it wasn't an inside day, but it's in your inside bar. It's interesting, the last two weeks, we're still all within the range of the week of April 30th. So just kind of slight sideways to down movement in here. The S&P came off of a very compressed week and was up 68 points uh, in a move. And what did it do during the week? It punched above that February 2nd high. We're going to talk about that. The NASDAQ 100, very compressed week this last, the, the previous week, the week of, April, of May 7th. And what did we do? We exploded to the upside up 463 points. So it continues to push to the to the high side. We'll see how much more we've got to go with that. But we're going to take a look at the S&P to start off with. And uh, let me go back and pull that up. Okay, I just talked about the weekly view on the SPX. And this is the daily view. It was down 6.07 on Friday. So on, when I look at the Elliott Wave pattern that I've got in this, because of the push higher above the February 2nd high, I now uh, have got to push intermediate wave two out a little bit in here. Well, we had it like this, and it was still valid as long as this high didn't break. Well, right now, this is what I'm looking at, and we're watching to see. We're going to talk about the detail in this in just a minute. I'm kind of tagging it up here around a 61.8% retracement of two versus one, and the wave four high of one lower degree in here. The, the minor wave four of intermediate wave one. Okay, so that's what we're looking at. And when we look at the daily chart, here's some of the relationships that we're looking at. Something happened here where something got a little bit, hold on, let me fix that. Okay, now we got it fixed. Okay, so right now we've got a WXY for intermediate wave two. And, uh, you know, so what is WXY? It's a combined zigzag pattern. You know, we, we first 
thought we had a zigzag right in here coming off that October low and thought, okay, this is this is beautiful. We got our short little zigzag, 38% retracement. And as it came down into December, we thought, well, here we go. And then all of a sudden the market threw us a curve, got a little more complex, created this bigger zigzag, and then we got a repeat of the same thing in March. And so now, yes, we're sitting here with a double zigzag, a much more complex wave two, not exactly what you expect for a wave two, but you never really know. And there's no rule that says wave two cannot be a complex corrective type pattern. The mere fact that we are in a corrective pattern means that it can become very complex and that's exactly what's happened. So where we are right now is we're looking for this Y wave, which is a corrective pattern to complete. And right now it looks like it's a zigzag pattern for the Y wave. So that's what I'm looking for. We'll see if that plays out. If that is the case, this C wave needs to be a five wave move, which can be either an ending diagonal or an impulsive wave. So again, here's the prior wave four high right here at 43.25. And uh, if we look for uh, some relationships, where does C equal A? Well, that's up here at 44.26, okay? And then where does Y equal, what kind of relationships do we have on Y versus W? It does, e equality is 45.25. 13 when you round it. So that's a little bit a little bit up there. 61.8% is a lot lower. So now we'll see where these where these line up as we start to get as we start to continue to push higher. But the key is we're going to be watching the wave structure of this C wave as we continue to push up. So for the for the spy, we've got the same exact thing going on. Now and the same exact type of, uh, of wave counts. So we're looking for the same, the, the numbers are just a little bit different. So when I talk about two versus one, we're in this reversal zone and we're talking about intermediate wave two as a percent of intermediate wave one. In this 50 to 61.8%, what I call a reversal zone in here. Okay, so watching for it to turn back down. And it's interesting how we get very close to that wave four high and we're right in there where we got some things that start to line up. So that's what we're going to keep an eye on here. And again, watching the wave structure of the C wave. Okay, that's where we sit with the SPY. Uh, let's take a look at uh, NVIDIA, Alphabet, and uh, Meta. Okay, I'm showing the long-term chart of NVIDIA. And I, I've talked about this before. The only change I've made is right in here, and we'll look at that. We'll zoom in on that in just a minute. But I think we are in cycle wave three, and within cycle wave three, I think we've had three primary waves, one, two, three. Notice how wave two was a sharp zigzag in here in the 2008 financial crisis. And now I think because we had this sharp zigzag for two, I think either we have a flat or a triangle going on right now. I'm looking at it as a possible flat. So here's why. Let me zoom in and let me take it off a of semi-log because we're kind of zoomed in here. Okay, so here's the picture. Um, it looks like a three-wave move for A, B, C for intermediate wave A. It looks like a three-wave move up for B. Now, when you have a flat, the B wave needs to retrace at least 90% of A. Well, we're very, very close. We're at 88.4%. Seven more points higher intro week, and we're going to hit that 90% level. Now, the other thing about a flat is there's no rule that says it can't go beyond the beginning of A. As a matter of fact, many times it does. So here's the beginning of A right here. Could, it, could this continue to push up in here and go above? Yes. But we're getting pretty extended. You can see right in here, just like we've done, you know, before. Uh, just because we get extended doesn't mean you can't keep pushing, but we'll just watch and see what kind of price action we get. But this is the picture that we've got. So the expectation, if this is a flat, I'm looking for a C wave to begin. That will be a five wave move down in here for the C wave. And the first target will be where C equals A. Okay, so that is the picture we've got on NVIDIA. Let's take a look at uh, Alphabet. Okay, here's the daily picture of Google. 
okay, alphabet class A. So the intraday high occurred in February, uh, on February 2nd, 2022. And then the low occurred in November of 2022. And now I think we've got the same kind of pattern going on, a WXY in here. We've already retraced pretty deep in here, over 61.8% on two versus one on this picture, okay? Over, a little over 61.8%. We're above the end of wave four, okay? So, we, you know, check, check. Pretty deep when we look at C versus uh, even w, ver w versus Y, we are beyond 100% equality. We're beyond 138.2, which is the next uh, Fibonacci relationship I'd be looking for. When we look at, uh, let me clear that out to get rid of the noise. Let me look at C versus A in here. It's a part of the zigzag. We're slightly beyond the 100% level, 123.23. So yes, we're sitting, seeing a whole lot of things that say, we've hit the extensions in here. Are we going to now start to reverse and head south? Well, we got a little bit of that activity potentially on Friday. Look at the big swing that happened on Friday. Interday high, 125.97. We closed down seven cents at 122.76. We'll see if we get any follow through uh, back down to the downside. And, you know, when I look at just the moving average view, yeah, we're extended in here. And this this little marker right here is my notation for uh, Tom DeMarc's sequ sequential cell setup complete. It's well, not complete, sequential cell setup perfected uh, on Thursday with the close on Thursday. And then here's where we sit and we've had what, two, four, six, seven days in a row outside the top of the Keltner channel. We are definitely extended. It usually doesn't stay out there all that long. We'll see what happens. Okay, that is uh, Google. Let's take a look at Meta. Okay, here's a daily chart of Meta, and look where it peaked. It peaked in September of 21, and it didn't bottom until November of 22. Okay, so it peaked earlier than the NASDAQ, and the S and the S and P, and it bottomed later than the Nasdaq and the S and P, and now and this was a beautiful five wave move down. This this intermediate wave three was just was really nice. I love seeing this triangle for a wave four in here. This is a beautiful five wave move. So again, you get a five wave move. This is the primary direction of Meta. So this is counter trend, okay? So when this ends, the expectation is we're gonna be heading south. The real question is, when is this gonna end? So right now, we've got a retracement in here, B versus A, where are we sitting? How high? Let's take a look at B versus A. We're a little over 50, we're in that retracement zone. We're a little over 50%, not quite to 61.8%. The other thing that's really interesting, the high on Friday, 248.69. The bottom of the gap over here, 248 even. So we got this big gap. Are we really, are we going to punch into this gap and close it? Or are we going to reverse and this is enough? I mean, right now, when you look at these kind of relationships, I mean, we've definitely pulled back enough. But because of this big gap, it may continue to retrace even more. Well, let's take a look at C versus A just for comparison purposes. We haven't hit equality. Quality's up here 276. That's well into the gap where C would equal A. So yeah, we could get a little bit more of a move and push to the upside. We've definitely got divergence that's showing up, both longer term as well as kind of shorter term between these, uh, these highs in here, this move that occurred here on May 1st to what happened here on Friday, Thursday, Friday uh, type of move. So yeah, it's been very strong. There's no doubt it's in this whole counter trend move in here. We'll see how much further it has to go before we start to break down. Okay, that's it for this weekend. If you felt like the video was helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber to the channel, hit that little subscriber button. 
And if you'd like more of this information on a regular basis, head on over to joehenches.net. Check out the website. Check out the membership. Everyone have a great week. We'll talk to you on the next video.